If you believe we have crashed craft, uh, stated earlier, do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? As I've stated publicly already in my News Nation interview, biologics came to some of these recoveries. Yeah. The stuff is landing or crashing around the world, and unexpected countries have had this happen. Like, what the hell just crashed in Northern Italy? Uh, that is not ours, but let's look at it together. Imagine a world where the government possesses alien spaceships and even bodies from beyond the stars. That's the wild claim made by David Grush, a former intelligence officer with a serious resume. He served in the Air Force, worked for the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, and even the National Reconnaissance Office. Now he's saying the government has been hiding a decades-long operation to recover and study crashed UFOs and their pilots. How many crash retrieval incidents have there been? It is double digit. Uh, these specific numbers I do know, however, I can't discuss that. Grush says this program involves multiple government agencies and private companies, all working together in secret. They'd be recovering both intact alien vehicles and wreckage from crashes. If this is true, it means the government has had proof of extraterrestrial life for a long time, but has kept it all under wraps. It is a reverse engineering program to garner some kind of insight. Think about it, intact alien spacecraft. Imagine the technology they could hold. We could learn about advanced propulsion, material science, and way more than we even know exists. Even the wreckage would be a treasure trove of information about how these crafts work, and it gets even more interesting. Grush claims defense contractors are involved too. These companies often have the top-notch facilities and expertise needed to analyze and even try to understand how these alien technologies work. It all paints a picture of a joint effort between the military, intelligence agencies, and private companies, all working together to unlock the secrets of extraterrestrial technology. Pretty mind-blowing stuff, right? Okay, so we talked about the bombshell claims that the government might be hiding alien spaceships and even bodies from beyond the stars. But if all that technology is real, what would it mean for us mere Earthlings? Buckle up, because things are about to get even more mind-bending. Imagine spaceships that can cheat the speed of light or even bend gravity itself. That's the kind of stuff whistleblowers like David Grush are talking about. This could completely redefine space exploration, making it possible to visit distant galaxies in a fraction of the time it takes now. The possibilities for scientific discovery and understanding the universe would be mind-boggling. But it's not just spaceships. The materials used in these crafts could be unlike anything we've ever seen, potentially stronger, lighter, and even able to withstand the inferno of a star. This could revolutionize all sorts of industries, from building lighter and safer airplanes to creating next-generation medical equipment that could withstand extreme environments. Imagine the incredible advancements in fields like transportation, construction, and even everyday consumer goods. Then there's the whole energy question. If aliens have cracked the code on unknown energy sources, like harnessing the free energy from the universe itself, it could be a game changer. We could ditch fossil fuels and switch to clean, renewable energy sources practically overnight. This would not only have a profound impact on the environment, but could also usher in a new era of global cooperation and energy independence. Now, the idea of alien weapons is a bit scary. We wouldn't want any hostile forces getting their hands on super-powered ray guns, right? But there's another side to the coin. If we had advanced defensive technology, it could actually deter potential aggressors and promote peace through superior defensive capabilities. Imagine a world where the threat of large-scale conflict is significantly reduced because no one wants to mess with a civilization wielding unimaginable technology. So, whether these claims are true or not, one thing's for sure. The potential implications are staggering. They could rewrite the course of human history in ways we can't even begin to imagine. It could usher in a new era of scientific discovery, technological advancement, and even global peace. But it's important to remember that these are just hypothetical scenarios based on unconfirmed claims. However, they do serve as a thought-provoking reminder of the vast potential that lies beyond our current understanding of the universe. We delved into the claims of whistleblowers like Bob Lazar and David Grush, who allege the government is hiding alien spaceships and technology. 
Now let's zoom in on Lazar's specific story, which is filled with mind-bending ideas and controversy. I did get a chance uh, to look inside the craft on only one occasion, and this was important because where the reactor sat might have been critical to how it operated. One of Lazar's central claims is gravity wave propulsion, a concept suggesting these alien spacecraft could manipulate the fabric of space and time itself for movement. Imagine them creating a bubble of warped space, allowing them to travel at phenomenal speeds, perhaps even exceeding the speed of light. Lazar went a step further, elaborating on how this propulsion system supposedly works. He introduced a special element, element 115, which he claimed was the key ingredient. According to him, this element, when stimulated with protons, could generate an incredibly strong gravitational field that could then be harnessed for propulsion. It also allegedly functioned as a limitless energy source for the entire spacecraft. Now here's where things get complicated. Scientists haven't found any evidence to support Lazar's claims. The element he described, element 115, actually exists and is now called Moscovium but it bears no resemblance to what Lazar described. Real Moscovium is highly unstable and wouldn't be capable of the feats Lazar attributed to element 115. Adding to the skepticism, scientists have pointed out inconsistencies between Lazar's explanations and established principles of physics and materials science. Additionally, the absence of publicly available proof or demonstrable prototypes of the technology fuels further doubt. Another significant aspect of Lazar's story is the alleged government cover-up. He claims the government went to extraordinary lengths to conceal this extraterrestrial technology from implementing stringent security clearances to supposedly harassing him after he went public. While some individuals believe him, others point to discrepancies in his background that raise questions about his credibility. So where do we stand? The truth is we simply don't know. While Lazar's claims are undoubtedly intriguing, the lack of scientific evidence leaves them shrouded in mystery. Decades apart, two names have emerged, Bob Lazar and David Grush, and their stories share some striking similarities that raise some mind-boggling questions. Let's rewind to the 1980s. Bob Lazar bursts onto the scene, claiming he wasn't just tinkering with gadgets in his garage. He was reverse-engineering alien spacecraft at a secret facility near Area 51. You used to work at Area 51. Well, you know, we want to be accurate. Okay. Area S4. S4, okay. It's about 15 miles south of Area 51. According to Lazar, these spacecraft defied the laws of physics as we know them, using anti-gravity propulsion fueled by an element unknown to science, which he called Element 115. Fast forward to the present day, and we have David Grush, a former intelligence officer with a distinguished military background, making waves with his own set of extraordinary claims. Grush alleges that the US government, through various agencies and in collaboration with defense contractors, has been actively involved in the retrieval and analysis of crashed extraterrestrial vehicles and even biological remains. These crafts, he says, possess technology and materials far surpassing anything humanity has ever seen. If these claims were true, the implications would be nothing short of mind-blowing. It wouldn't just confirm the existence of extraterrestrial life, but also suggest that we've been secretly studying their incredibly advanced technology for decades. Imagine spaceships defying gravity, materials stronger than diamond, and who knows what other scientific breakthroughs waiting to be unlocked. Both Lazar and Grouch paint a picture of a government working tirelessly to keep this information under wraps. They describe a web of secrecy, with stringent security measures, compartmentalized information, and alleged attempts to silence anyone who dares to speak up. Their reasoning, national security concerns, and the desire to maintain a technological edge over other countries. Now it's important to acknowledge that these are extraordinary claims, and extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Lazar's story, while captivating, has been met with skepticism, due to the lack of verifiable evidence and inconsistencies in his background. However, he has remained a central figure in UFO enthusiast circles, inspiring countless documentaries and discussions. Grouch, on the other hand, comes with a background in intelligence and the military, which might lend his claims a different level of credibility. However, like Lazar, he faces challenges in providing concrete evidence that can be publicly verified. So what does it all mean? As of now, the truth remains shrouded in mystery.
These are just stories, and until something concrete emerges, they'll likely continue to be debated and dissected by believers and skeptics alike. But one thing's for sure, they spark our imaginations and leave us pondering the vast unknown that lies beyond our planet. After all, the universe is a fascinating place, and who knows what secrets it might still hold. Did you ask any questions about no, that? There's no, there's questions. no asking questions. There's no asking questions. No. There Are has there? to be some people right. that know everything. I think a lot of that is private industry, because the government is just so leaky. Bob Lazar has been a fascinating figure in the realm of ufology and conspiracy theories for decades, captivating the public with his claims of working on alien technology at a secret site near Area 51. You used to work at Area 51. Well, you know, we Careful. want to be accurate. Okay. Area S4. Lazar's narrative is particularly intriguing due to his assertion of holding degrees in physics and electronic technology from the prestigious Massachusetts Institute of Technology and the California Institute of Technology, also known as Caltech. These academic credentials are crucial to his story, as they would, in theory, make him more than qualified to work on the advanced projects he described. However, Lazar's educational claims have been met with skepticism as no records of his attendance or graduation from these institutions have been found. Um, again, I forgot where the hell I am. This lack of evidence, including the absence of any corroborating accounts from classmates or professors, has led many to question the authenticity of his educational background. Further scrutiny of Lazar's academic history suggests he might have pursued education at a junior college or taken electronics courses elsewhere. While commendable, these alternative educational paths would not typically qualify someone for the types of roles Lazar claims to have held, particularly those involving reverse engineering extraterrestrial technology. Lazar's most famous claim centers around his alleged employment at S4, a supposed secretive site near Area 51. He describes S4 as a facility embedded in a mountainside containing extraterrestrial spacecrafts. According to Lazar, his work focused on understanding and replicating the craft's advanced propulsion technologies, which he claims were powered by element 115, also known as Moscovium, a then unknown element. Despite the detailed nature of Lazar's descriptions, the US government and military have consistently denied the existence of a facility like S-4 and any employment of Lazar in projects involving extraterrestrial technology. The lack of verifiable evidence supporting Lazar's employment or the existence of the technologies he describes has been a significant obstacle in validating his claims. The skepticism surrounding Lazar's narrative is compounded by the absence of evidence confirming his educational background. Without concrete proof, Lazar's extraordinary assertions remain a subject of debate, leaving his credibility in question among critics and supporters alike. In the enigmatic world of Bob Lazar and his allegations about Area 51, there's a detail that continues to intrigue both skeptics and believers. Lazar's description of a unique hand scanner used for security at the S4 facility. This isn't your ordinary biometric device that we're accustomed to today, such as fingerprint or retina scanners. According to Lazar, this scanner was far more sophisticated, focusing on the bones within the hand through a series of light emissions. It's a compelling aspect of his story, especially considering the emergence of photographic evidence years later that corroborated the existence of similar technology used in classified environments. Now, in order to gain entrance to the facility, Bob Lazar depicted this security device as utilizing pins of light to measure the bone length and other unique characteristics beneath the skin of the hand. This method of identification is intriguing because it leverages the distinctiveness of an individual's hand bone structure, which, much like fingerprints, offers a highly unique identifier. The scanner operated by emitting narrow beams of light onto the hand, with these beams penetrating the skin to interact differently with the bones beneath. This interaction allowed the device to map the hand's bone structure, creating a detailed biometric profile based on bone lengths and spatial relationships. The critical piece of evidence supporting Lazar's claim came to light when photographs and documents of a device known as the Identimat surfaced. This device, used in sensitive locations including government and military facilities, functioned in a remarkably similar manner to Lazar's descriptions. It measured hand characteristics using light beams, focusing on the bone structure for identification purposes. 
The Identimat's emergence, a technology developed in the 1970s and deployed in high security areas, provided a tangible piece of evidence that Lazar might have been familiar with the security measures of highly classified environments. The discovery of the Identimat technology was a pivotal moment for those following Lazar's story. It suggested that Lazar had detailed knowledge of the security practices within government facilities, which for some added a layer of credibility to his other claims. This point is particularly interesting when considering the broader context of Lazar's narrative and the skepticism surrounding his educational and employment history. The hand scanner's description and the subsequent validation through the Identimat's discovery showcase how specific details in Lazar's story have found support, reigniting debates about the veracity of his claims regarding Area 51 and his work on extraterrestrial technology. Among the many fascinating claims Bob Lazar has made regarding his alleged work on extraterrestrial technology near Area 51, one of the lesser known yet thought-provoking assertions involves the origins of religion. According to Lazar, during his tenure at the S-4 site, he was privy to briefing documents that offered an unconventional perspective on human history, particularly concerning how early human religious beliefs might have been shaped by extraterrestrial encounters. Lazar's claim dives into the possibility that extraterrestrial beings interacted with early humans who might have perceived these advanced visitors as divine or supernatural entities. This, he suggests, influenced the nascent stages of religious development, embedding the presence and actions of these beings into the very foundation of emerging religious practices and mythologies. The documents purportedly provided a reinterpretation of historical religious events, hinting that accounts deemed divine or miraculous in ancient texts could, in fact, be descriptions of encounters with advanced extraterrestrial technology and beings. The profound implication here is that many foundational religious doctrines might stem from humanity's misinterpretations of these extraterrestrial interactions. However, as with many of Lazar's claims, this intriguing narrative has been met with considerable skepticism. Critics argue that the absence of physical evidence and the inability to independently verify the existence of such documents significantly undermines the credibility of these assertions. Additionally, the notion that the rich tapestry of Earth's diverse religious traditions could all trace back to a single extraterrestrial origin is seen by many scholars and theologians as an oversimplification of the complex and multifaceted history of religious evolution. This claim about extraterrestrial influence on the origins of religion adds yet another layer to the already complex and controversial story of Bob Lazar. If Bob Lazar is right about all of this, does this mean aliens have been in contact with Earth for thousands of years? Bob Lazar's story takes a deep dive into the realm of science fiction with his claims about UFO technology and Element 115. According to Lazar, the secret S-4 facility near Area 51 housed extraterrestrial spacecraft powered by technology that was not just beyond human capabilities at the time, but also seemed to challenge the very laws of physics as we understand them. At the heart of these spacecraft was Element 115, an element that, according to Lazar, was the key to unlocking their mind-boggling capabilities. Before it was officially recognized and named Muscovium in 2003, Element 115, as Lazar described it, possessed properties that differed significantly from the scientific community's understanding. He claimed this element could produce a gravitational field when bombarded with protons, leading to a reaction that could generate an anti-gravity field around the craft. This description paints a picture of a clean and highly efficient energy source, capable of propelling the spacecraft across vast distances by bending space-time. The propulsion mechanism, as Lazar detailed, revolved around anti-gravity technology, allowing the crafts to manipulate space-time around them. This technology purportedly reduced the craft's mass to nearly zero, enabling instantaneous travel across space. Lazar's explanation of gravity wave amplification as the method by which these UFOs operated suggests a technology capable of pulling the craft forward by generating a wave ahead of it, thus falling towards its destination at incredible speeds. Lazar also described the interior layout of these crafts, which was fundamentally designed to support this advanced propulsion system. The control systems were integrated with the gravitational drive, facilitating what one can only imagine as seamless navigation and operation. The theoretical capabilities for travel that Lazar outlined are nothing short of revolutionary, suggesting that interstellar journeys could be undertaken in fractions of the time required by traditional propulsion methods. 
essentially making the vastness of space navigable within human lifetimes. The narrative Bob Lazar presents is a compelling blend of mystery and technological marvel, offering a glimpse into what could be if his accounts hold any truth. The stories of Element 115 and the propulsion technologies of UFOs as described by Lazar continue to fuel discussions and debates on the possibilities of space travel and the existence of extraterrestrial technology on Earth.